Hello students, Quinto A and Quinto B, this is Ms. Mariana here and I'm going to work with you today. Today's video, it's about gram. Uh, today we are going to work on the structure of um, unit five. Okay, so I need you first, please pay attention to the following video, okay? What did you do? Have a good weekend, Monica. Oh yeah, it was great. So what did you do? On Saturday, I went to the theater with my parents. What play did you see? I saw Cinderella and it was an amazing show. What did you like the most? I like the costumes and the songs. What about Sunday? Did you do anything special? I read a book in the morning. Then I did my homework, though I didn't feel like it, but I knew I had to. The weather was so beautiful and warm, so we went on a picnic in the park in the afternoon. We ate some sandwiches and drank some fresh orange juice. After lunch, we stood on the stream bank and fed the dogs. Then we took a nice stroll through the park. A moment later, it started to rain. So we ran as fast as we could. As soon as I got home, I took a hot bath. So, as you could see in the video, you already watched and listened. This video is about two girls, two friends, talking about their um, activities they did in the past. Uh, one of the girls asked, asked to the other, what did you do uh, on Saturday? And the girl with the fish tails, la niña con las trencitas, said, I went to the theater with my parents. O sea, fui al teatro con mi, mis papás. So that is what we are going to study today, dear students. We are going to study how to express the actions or events you already did in the past, okay? So pay attention to the following. Okay, as I said before, we continue with unit number five. The name of the unit was past times and the objective for today is to talk about activities we did in the past. When we uh, want to talk or yes, to talk to express an activity you already did in the past, we use a tense called past simple or simple past. Now in Spanish, cuando tú quieres referirte, expresar o expresarte sobre una actividad que hiciste en el pasado, utilizamos un tiempo que se llama pasado simple. Okay, so let's continue with the rest. So past simple, is a tense, es un tiempo verbal, uh, that we use to talk about actions we started and finished in a specific moment in the past. That means in Spanish, el pasado simple, como dije anteriormente, es un tiempo que usamos para hablar o expresarnos sobre las acciones que comenzamos y terminamos en un momento específico del pasado. Okay? For example, the timeline, the timeline would be like this. This would be the timeline for past simple. As you can see here, if this is the present, like now, this is our present, and the past simple uh, is used to talk or to express action here in this part of the time. Uh, it's an action you already started and finished in the past, okay? <clears throat> Entonces, este es el, el, la línea del tiempo que se puede referir al pasado simple. Como tú ves, hay la green cross, la cruz verde que indica la actividad que iniciaste en el pasado, y el circle, El círculo de indica que fue terminado. Ok. So, eh, I need you please now open your English copy book, que abras tu cuaderno de inglés y escribas el título Past Simple, The Use and the Timeline. Que escribas el uso del pasado simple y dibujes esta línea de tiempo. No es necesario dibujar mami. Ok. So, take your time y cuando estés ready, continuamos. Ok, let's move on. Eh, as any tense, present, past, or future, we are going to work on this tense, past, simple, 
into three areas, affirmative, negative, and interrogative or question. Okay, so let's start with the first one, which is the affirmative form. How do you build your affirmative sentence? ¿Cómo tú puedes crear tu oración afirmativa en pasado simple? First, you need to include, as you can see here, the subject. The subject, remember students, eh, means el sujeto de la oración, que es quien realiza una actividad, quien realiza la acción. En este caso, yo incluí pronombres personales en inglés. I, you, we, they, he, she, or it, para, eso, para un animal o una cosa. Eh, you can also include, instead of personal pronouns, you can include, for example, the name of a person, or names of people, eh, an object, or an animal. No es necesariamente que vas a incluir un pronombre personal. Puedes incluir el nombre de una persona, o de un grupo de personas, el nombre de una ciudad, un objeto, un animal, etc. After the subject, luego del sujeto, you have to include the past form of a verb, el pasado de un verbo. In this case, I chose the verb study, estudiar, but I transform the verb into past, which is studied. Okay? Transformé el verbo study a pasado, que es study, en pasado. Ya, si ustedes se fijan, ahí está en pasado. And finally, we have to include the rest of, this, of the sentence. In this case, I chose the word English. Ya, el rest of the sentence es, eh, no siempre es obligación, pero yo siempre lo recomiendo utilizarlo para darle una mejor coherencia a nuestra oración. So, would be, for example, I studied English. Yo estudié inglés. You studied English. Tú o ustedes estudiaron inglés. He studied English. Él estudió inglés. Entonces, one more time, I need you please open your English copybook. Te voy a pedir nuevamente que abras tu cuaderno de inglés y escribas el título Fast Simple Affirmative y eh, copias este pequeño cuadrito gramatical de la estructura del pasado simple. Tómate tu tiempo y cuando estés ready, continuamos. So, ready? Let's move on to now the negative form of the past simple. To make your sentences in past simple negative, you have to uh, do the following, um, or you need to, to follow the, the, this structure. Vas a seguir la siguiente estructura. First, the subject, una vez más, el, el sujeto, pronombre personal, como en este caso, I, you, we, they, he, she, it. The name of a person, the names of people, object, animal, as you want. After that, you have to include yes or yes, tienes que incluir sí o sí, después del sujeto, la pequeña palabra didn't. Didn't or did not is an auxiliary verb, es un verbo auxiliar que nos indica que es negar en pasado. ¿ya? Entonces, para eh, la segunda parte de tu eh, oración negativa en pasivo, you have to include didn't or did not. Okay? After the didn't, you have to include the infinitive verb. Yeah. ¿Se acuerdan que en el, el recuadro anterior, anterior yo usé the verb studied, el verbo studied, y ya estaba en pasado? En este caso, como tú utilizas didn't, que ya está en pasado, el verbo no va a ir conjugado, no va a transformarse en pasado, lo vas a poner en infinitivo. Infinitivo es cuando la acción está neutra, no está en presente, en pasado, ni en futuro. Por ejemplo, study. Okay, study in Spanish means estudiar, pero ahí está el neutro, no está en presente, en pasado ni en futuro. Lo que te indicó el pasado fue el didn't, ok? Entonces tenemos subject, didn't, infinitive verb, in this case study. And finally, one more time, I suggest you to include the rest of the sentence. In this case, one more time, English. So it would be, I didn't study English. Yo no estudié inglés. You didn't study English. Tú o ustedes no estudiaron inglés. Generalmente que eso no, no es verdad. Quinto a quinto, yo sé que estudiaron. She didn't study English. Ella no estudió inglés. Yes? Entonces, one more time, students, quinto a quinto B. I need you please open your English copybook, que abras tu cuaderno de inglés y escribas entonces el título. Past Simple Negative and this grammar box. Este pequeño cuadrito de la estructura del pasado simple negativo. Tómate tu tiempo y cuando estés ready, colocas play nuevamente. So now let's go to the last part. Vamos ahora entonces a la última parte del past simple, which is the interrogative form. Okay? Here in the interrogative, this is 
99% similar to the affirmative one. Es como un 99% parecido al de la forma afirmativa. Because the only difference or two differences here is that first you have to switch the order uh, between subject and the uh, did. Eh, tienes que ahí cambiar el orden, se lo voy a explicar ahora. The first word you have to include in your question in past simple is the word did, lo que está in red. Did means past. El did, recordemos que nos indica que es pasado. ¿ya? Cuando es pregunta, vas a comenzar con did. After that, you have to include the subject. For example, in this case, personal pronouns. Did I, did you, did he, etc. After that, after the subject, you have to include the infinitive verb. No present, no past, no future. Infinitive is neutral. Recuerden que el verbo infinitivo es un verbo neutro, que no está en presente, pasado y futuro. And then after, finally, we have to include the rest of the sentence. In this case, English. And the question mark. Con las, el signo interroga, de interrogación. Okay? So our sentence would be, did I study English? Estudié yo inglés? Did you study English? ¿Estudiaste tu inglés? Did he study English? ¿Estudió él inglés? Yes or no? So these are, uh, this is the structure to make our questions in past simple. Esta es la estructura que tú debes seguir para hacer una pregunta en pasado simple. Now, pay attention. If you have a question with did, si tienes una pregunta con did, que empieza así tal como sale en el cuadrito, you have two alternatives of answers. Tienes dos alternativas de respuesta. First, the affirmative. In this case, if the answer is affirmative, si la respuesta es afirmativa, eh, perdón, sí, si la respuesta es afirmativa, tú tienes que decir yes, the subject, and did. For example, did you study English? Yes, we did. Y eso es todo. ¿Ok? O, did he study English? Yes, he did. ¿Ok? What about the other, uh, the other answer? On the opposite, we have got the negative answer. So, in this case, it would be no, the subject, and didn't. So, it would be, did you study English? No, we didn't. Did he study English? No, he didn't. Didn't. Ok. So, one more time, te voy a pedir, quinto A, quinto B, open your English copybook, write down the title past simple interrogative form, and uh, write, down, write down this grammar box with the two answers. Te voy a pedir entonces que nuevamente en tu cuadro en inglés escribas el título past simple interrogative, hagas este cuadrito gramatical con las dos respuestas, affirmative and negative. Tómate tu tiempo. Cuando estés ready, continuamos. Ok, dear students, so you ready? Finished? Very good. So now, please, I need you go to your student's book on page number 48. Here we have the page. Student's book, color book, page 48. Go for your book, search um, the page, and I'm going to wait for you here. So ready? Page 48, here we go. On page 48, we have an activity at the beginning, activity number 11, which is a, like, a, like a letter or a postcard uh, written uh, by Duncan. And he wrote a letter to his grandparents, his granny and his granddad. Okay, so now I need you please first read this text, okay? Read the text because uh, this text is going to be useful for the next activity in your activity book, okay? Entonces te voy a pedir que leas este texto, ya, con calma, puedes poner pausa en el video, lo lees después de ver el video, porque te va a servir para la actividad que viene en el activity book, okay? So let's continue. In number 13, we have the grammar boxes related to past simple. The past simple we already mentioned in the PowerPoint presentation. First, here we have the first box refer to um, the affirmative form. 
Here we have the subjects or pronouns. Then we have here uh, the actions or verbs in past, here, would. And finally, we have the rest of the sentences here, okay? Esto ya lo vimos en el PowerPoint presentation, okay? A lo mejor aquí se ve un poco más complicado, por eso se los hice en el PowerPoint para que fuera un poquito más easy, un poco más fácil. Next to this affirmative box, we have the negative one. Pay attention, we have first the subjects, okay? After that, we have the negative form of past, la forma negativa en pasado, which is didn't, recuerden chicos y chicas del quinto a quinto B, para negar siempre tienes que usar en pasado el didn't, o did not, que es lo mismo. After that, we have the verb in infinitive and the rest of the sentence. Okay? And finally, we have uh, the grammar boxes with a question for. First, we have the did. After that, we have the subjects. And after that, we have got the verbs in infinitive with the rest of the sentence and the question mark, okay? And here we have the two options of answers. We have the affirmative answer and the negative, okay? This is what we already studied in the PowerPoint presentation some minutes ago. Es lo mismo que estudiamos en el PowerPoint presentation eh, hace algunos minutos atrás, okay? So, ready with that? Let's continue. Okay, dear students, so we already read the text on page, eh, on the student's book, page number 48. Ya leíste el texto de la página 48, 48 del student's book. Volvimos a ver el grammar boxes o los grammar boxes de past simple. So now I need you go to your activity book, no color book, on page number 47, en la página 47 de tu, de tu activity book, ¿ya? Yeah? So, ve por tu libro, busca la página y yo esperaré aquí. Okay, guys, so let's continue. Page number 47 in your activity book. We have here the first activity which is related to the same letter you already read in the student's book. Es la misma carta que leíste en el student's book. But the difference is that here you have to complete the text with the verbs in past or in infinitive when uh, they are questions or negatives, forms. Pay attention that here we have uh, the verbs in infinitive. Lo, ya están los verbos en infinitivo en el paréntesis. Por ejemplo, in number one, Last Saturday, I go is the verb in infinitive. So what's the past of go? ¿Cuál es la forma pasado de go? Is went. ¿Ya? Recuerda que cuando, en este caso, es una oración afirmativa. Entonces, como es una oración afirmativa, en pasado simple, tú tienes que transformar el verbo en el paréntesis a pasado. Si fuera una oración negativa o pregunta, el verbo que está en paréntesis lo copias igual, porque es infinitivo, ¿ok? So, ya te di hartas pistas. If you don't know the past form of some verbs, si no te sabes el pasado de alguno de estos verbos, feel free, siéntate libre, and Google, ¿ok? Google the past form of some verbs. Siéntate libre, como dije, de buscar en Google eh, o en algún diccionario en casa el pasado de los verbos en infinitivo cuando los necesites transformar, ¿ok? So let's continue to the other activity. Activity number 11, be, sorry, read and write, be a grammar detective. Here we have um, the use of past simple. Okay, we are going to read it. it. Says, we use the past simple tense to talk about events in the past. All persons are the same. Entonces, el, el, usamos el pasado simple para referirnos a hechos o eventos que, eh, del pasado. Todas las personas En este caso, I, you, we, they, he, she, it, van todas igual en el pasado, en afirmación, negación o pregunta, ¿ya? Um, to make the past simple tense of regular verbs, we add the ed. For example, look, looked. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Para nosotros transformar un verbo de infinitivo, o sea, neutro, 
ha pasado, los vamos a, clasi a clasificar en dos tipos de verbos, regulares e irregulares. Los regular verbs, los, regu los verbos regulares, para transformarlos de infinitivo a pasado, solamente debes agregar la ed al final. Como sale aquí en el ejemplo, dice, por ejemplo, tenemos el infinitivo look, lo transformamos a pasado y queda looked, con ed al final. ¿Se fijan? Luego dice, for regular verbs that end in e, we add, we add the d. For example, live, queda lived. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Cuando tienes un verbo regular que termina en la vocal E, tú solo agregas la D al final. ¿Ya? Como en el caso de live, lived. Luego dice, for regular verbs that end in Y, we change the Y to I and add ED. For example, try. We have the infinitive try, tried. ¿Ya? ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Para verbos regulares que terminan en Y, nosotros sacamos la Y y lo cambiamos por la I latina, la I con puntito, y agregas IED. Por ejemplo, try, termina en Y, sacamos la Y y queda IED, tried. Como en el caso del ejemplo del PowerPoint presentation, I use study. Study es un verbo que termina en Y. Saqué la Y y puse studied. ¿Se fijan? ¿Se acuerdan? Luego dice, for regular verbs that end in consonant, vowel, consonant, we double the final consonant. Example, stop, queda stopped. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Cuando tengas un verbo regular que termina en consonante, vocal, consonante, repetimos la última consonante. Por ejemplo, stop, termina en Consonante, vocal, consonante. Consonante T, vocal O, consonante P. Por lo tanto, repetimos la letra P. Queda stopped. ¿Ok? Ok, guys. So here now we have the activity, which is that you have to transform, tienes que transformar, this verb into the past. ¿Ok? These verbs, all of them are regular verbs. Son todos regulares. Quiere decir que todos van a terminar con ed, con ed. Pero recuerda, como les expliqué hace unos segundos, las reglas de transformación de los verbos. En algunos casos incluyes ed, en otros tienes que colocar ied, en otros tienes que colocar solo la d, etc. Y en otros incluso tienes que repetir la consonante antes de la ed final. ¿Ok? For example, we have jump. The, that's the present or infinitive. And the past form of jump is jumped with ed al final. ¿Ok? Entonces continuamos. Y tienes que hacer el resto de los verbos tú en casa. ¿Ya? Recuerden que estas actividades las vamos a revisar terminadas en la próxima sesión mil. Del martes, with mi, quinto a Miss Jessica. Los viernes, mi quinto B with me, Miss Mariana. ¿Ok? Entonces vamos a la última actividad. Activity number 12 says, read and write correct sentences. See activity 10. Okay, in this activity, you are going to use the letter written by Duncan. La letra escrita por Duncan a sus grandparents. La, la, la carta, no la letra, la carta. Here, this letter, esta carta. You are going to use this letter to complete your activity number 12. You have to uh, read the, the sentences and write uh, true or correct sentences. For example, Duncan went to Loch Ness last Sunday. Let's see. Duncan went to Loch Ness last Sunday and I go to the letter last Saturday. I went to Loch Ness. So, no, he didn't. He went to Loch Ness last Saturday, not Sunday. Yes or no? What about number two? Duncan, Duncan wanted to see the lake. Duncan wanted to see the lake. Quería ver el lago. Yes or no? So let's see the, the text. Ah, you have the answer. And you say, no, he didn't. He. Okay. What about number three? Duncan watched a TV program. Go to the letter and verify. 
si no está correcta. So, no, he didn't. He. Number four, Duncan visited the Loch Ness shop. Go to the letter, vas a la carta, verify. Mm, it's not true. So you say, no, he didn't. He. And number five, Duncan had a boring time. El Duncan se, se aburrió. Go to the letter, vas a la carta, verify. And if it's not, you say, no, he didn't. He, and you complete the sentence, okay? Okay, dear students, that's it for today. Eso es todo por hoy. Remember, recuerden que tienen que terminar estas actividades antes de la próxima sesión mix. Quinto A with Miss Jessica, quinto B with me, okay? So, it was a pleasure. See you next time. Take care and kisses. Bye-bye.